I don't want to watch your stupid video. Just tell me what are the best tier 4 upgrades for the Supernaturals. Okay. Number 1, Ghost Rider passive. Number 2, Mordo passive. Number 3, Doctor Strange passive. Number 4, Doctor Strange ultimate. And number 5, Elsa Bloodstone special. That's it. This video is sponsored by Clan HQ. So Clan HQ is a fully featured messaging app with all your favorite features, plus features specific to MSF, including recruiting tools and alliance management tools. And this is because Clan HQ is designed specifically to meet the needs of mobile gamers. When you set up an alliance with Clan HQ, you can assign leaders and officers. It'll automatically create leadership channels for you. You'll always see the same name that members use in the game. You can even remove a member and they'll automatically be removed from all your team chats. Now, when it comes to recruiting, you can view looking for group ads and post your own looking for members ad. You can even auto filter ads to either your game profile or your alliance profile to immediately browse all the best candidates. So I've put a link to Clan HQ in the video description below so you can be one of the first to check them out. What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Orange Essentials. Today we're going to be breaking down the best tier 4 ability upgrades for the Supernaturals. So the Supernaturals are a bit of an interesting team in regards to their orange upgrades. They certainly have a handful of absolutely essential, huge functional upgrade T4 abilities. However, a large amount of their upgrades are just really strong. They're not necessary, but they have so many that are pretty strong that this team grows a lot if you do a ton of their T4s. I don't think they need very many T4s to totally come online, but their potential for growth with heavy T4 investment is a bit more than most teams. So on that note, let's break down their abilities. All right, first, let's take a look at Ghost Rider. So if you look at Ghost Rider's basic, so when you put T4s in this ability, it improves the base damage by 50%, but it also improves the bleed damage because bleed damage gets its damage from the ability level of the ability that applied it. So it's gonna jump up from 135% bleed damage to 150%. So you're getting 50% more on the attack, another 15% on the first turn of the bleed, and another 15% on the second turn of the bleed. Ultimately, you're looking at 80% more damage, and Ghost Rider already has really high base damage, so this is a pretty strong upgrade. It's certainly not essential, but it is very strong, so for me, this is a three star. All right, now let's take a look at the Ghost Rider special. So you put T4s in this ability, it adds 30% more damage to the primary target and 30% more damage to the adjacent targets. However, on the primary target, it makes both bleeds last for two turns. So you're getting an extra 150% damage per bleed stack, an extra 300% damage total, just from the second duration turn of those bleeds. So. This is very strong, it sounds like a ton of damage, and if those bleeds are able to persist and actually deal their damage, which it's really good, if they last for an extra turn, Scarlet Witch can extend them because they'll still be there, so you can actually end up getting an extra 600% damage out of this. It can be very impactful, but because it can be resisted, because it can be cleansed, because there's various things that can be done to deal with delayed damage, Although this is very, very strong, it's not quite essential for me, but again, it is very strong, so for me, this is a clear three star. All right, now let's take a look at Ghost Rider's ultimate. So this ability, when you put T4s in it, it gains 70% damage. And that's good for a single target attack that's kind of standard. However, the way that this tends to work with his kit, there are a lot of instances where he can gain ability energy, and it's only a total of 4 energy cost on this ability, so he ends up using it decently often, especially if anyone dies, which doesn't necessarily set the team that far back because of their potential to revive. So, he ends up using this quite a bit, and not only is it another 70% damage, but he heals himself for basically double the amount of damage that he deals if he's charged. So not only is this more damage, it's also more healing. So again, it's not super necessary. There will be times where it'll just amount to an extra 70% damage and that's it. But he has high damage and because it can be that much more healing and because I have seen him be able to use it many times throughout a fight, for me, this is a clear three star. All right, now let's take a look at the Ghost Rider passive. So putting T4 abilities in this changes a few things. Firstly, 
on non-summoned ally death, attack the enemy that killed that target. Instead of for 400% damage, it's for 500% damage. That is a lot more damage. Then it's going to change the generate 3 ability energy for self instead of generate 2 ability energy for self, which is also really, really huge. And in my opinion, that alone makes it a contender for a 4 star, but this is where it just becomes absolutely necessary. It increases Ghost Rider's max health and all Supernatural allies' max health by 20%. That is the same as 4 red stars worth of extra health for everybody. That is really, really huge, especially on a team that has a lot of sustain thanks to Mordo and Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange's innate sustain and Ghost Rider's innate sustain. So giving them more health pool to play with is really, really good. And their main weakness is that they're kind of squishy. They don't have high armor. They don't have a lot of defense up uptime if they have it at all. So giving them just that extra big chunk of health really goes a long way towards their survivability. And because this applies in combat, it doesn't actually raise their, their power level of their characters too much, so it's really good for Blitz. There's just so many bonuses to this. It is just so much good packed into one ability. No question, this is a four star upgrade, and in my opinion, should be your first. All right, now let's take a look at Elsa Bloodstone. So first we'll take a look at Elsa's basic. So when you put T4s in this ability, it gets an extra 10% piercing, but it also gets an extra 10% piercing to all five bonus attacks. So that is an extra 60% damage, and it is piercing damage, so it's really good. Elsa already has really good damage values, so this is a well above average upgrade. It's certainly not essential, but it's definitely above average, so for me, this is a clear three star. All right, now let's take a look at Elsa's special. So. Elsa special, when you put T4s in it, it gets an extra 60% damage to the primary target and an extra 60% damage to the most injured enemy, and that ignores Taunt and Stealth. So there's a couple reasons why I really, really like this ability upgrade. Now this is a turn 3 ability, but there are a good amount of ways for Elsa to get ability energy to be able to use this sooner, but she's pretty much always going to ult on turn 1, so she's usually going to have offense up for this ability. So right off the bat, you're going to get an even bigger jump up. But the way this ability works is it figures out who the most injured enemy is after you've done the first portion of the attack. So a lot of times, if you aim this properly, you can make sure that the person getting hit with the first portion of it is the person getting hit with the second portion of it, which means that you can get an extra 60% damage twice on the same target, an extra 120% instant damage on someone, and if it's offense up, which it's usually going to be, now you're talking an extra 180% damage to a single target. And that is really, really huge. And because that offense up second portion will ignore taunt and stealth, it's that much more likely to kill someone that was near death and you weren't quite able to reach because it is going after the most injured enemy. It's just so much extra damage. So I really, really like this. I think even for all their strong upgrades, this stands a cut above as being just so much more. So for me, this is a four star. All right, now let's take a look at Elsa's ultimate. So when you put T4s in this ability, it gives 30% more damage to the primary and adjacent, but it also gives an extra 10% damage per supernatural ally. So on a full supernatural team, you're looking at another extra 40% damage there. So all in all, we're talking an extra 70% damage to primary and adjacent. It's a splash damage attack. So an extra 70% damage is no joke, and she's going to offense up right before she does it. So it is quite a bit more damage. It's not super necessary, I think the team gets by without it, and it's not a monumental amount of damage, and it's just hitting a few splash targets, but it is very, very strong, like a lot of this team's upgrades, so for me, this is a three star. All right, now let's take a look at Elsa's passive. So putting T4s in this ability changes a few things. Firstly, on miss or on ally miss, if this character has three or more supernatural allies, attack that target for instead of 220% damage, 250% damage. On enemy dodge, attack that enemy for instead of 220% damage, 270% damage. So you're getting an extra 50% damage on any misses and any dodges. So that's just wonderful free extra damage and it's definitely pretty good. However, a quick note on how this ability works, it is programmed so that it only applies to non-passives. What I mean by that is if Shield Trooper is blind and his passive gets procced, when he misses, that will not trigger Elsa's passive because it was a passive ability that was attempting the attack that missed. 
So there are a few instances where uh, this isn't great. Uh, for example, Killmonger's passive she won't cover for. Uh, Shield Trooper's passive she won't cover for. There's a, a few others, Punisher passive she won't cover for, Captain Marvel passive, any of the passives that deal damage. She does uh, ignore those, which is unfortunate, but all in all, still pretty good. It's a lot of free damage, especially if you're going against a team that does a bunch of blinding or does a bunch of uh, dodging, evading. So you can get good damage out of it. And then the other part of this that's really nice is she goes from gaining 10% accuracy per supernatural ally to gaining 20% accuracy per supernatural ally. So her base accuracy is 120%, and then if she doesn't have this upgraded on a full supernatural team, she jumps up to 160%, which is pretty good. It means when she gets blinded, she still has a 60% chance to hit. However, when you upgrade this, she gets 200% accuracy total. So when she gets blinded, it only gets reduced 100%. So she still will always land all of her abilities. So combined with the fact that it makes her effectively totally blind immune on a supernatural team, and she's dealing a lot of extra damage, 50% more on any dodge, on any miss, which against certain teams can amount to a lot of those cover attacks. Uh, I think this is pretty strong. For me, this is a three star. All right, now let's take a look at Doctor Strange. So first we'll take a look at Doctor Strange's basic. When you apply T-Force to this ability, it only improves the damage 20%, although it is piercing and it is unavoidable, but it's not for the damage. What it does is it applies offense down for, instead of always just one turn offense down, it's a 50% chance to be a two turn offense down. So that can be really, really impactful. It's kind of random, but you do a fair amount of basic attacking with Doctor Strange and you mainly use him to choose an enemy that you want to soften their attacks. And so rather than having to attack the same enemy twice in a row, you know, two turns in a row because you want to keep them offense down, anytime you get that two turn offense down, that allows you to kind of ignore that character in most instances and Doctor Strange can then go on to offense down someone else. So in two turns, Doctor Strange can have two characters simultaneously offense down, forgetting any of the other debuffs he can apply with his wins or anything. So because this is a lot about controlling enemy damage, it's better than it looks. It's certainly not essential, but a two turn offense down from a single unavoidable basic is definitely good. So for me, this is a three star. All right, now let's take a look at Doctor Strange's special. Oof, this one's rough. So it goes from a 90% chance to flip all positive effects to a 100% chance to flip all positive effects. So this is pretty useless. There are a few super rare instances where this could screw you over, but I mean, first and foremost, nine times out of 10, this upgrade is gonna do nothing. The difference is instead of removing an effect, it will always flip it. So how this could be impactful is if an enemy has defense up, and you get that 1 in 10% chance where he doesn't flip it, he'll just remove it instead. Whereas the flip would get them stuck with a defense down. So yes, always flipping is better than usually flipping, sometimes removing, but because it's 90%, it's just such a small likelihood to happen. And worst case scenario, as long as you clear their positive effects, you're usually okay. So for me, this is a one star. Now let's look at the Doctor Strange Ultimate. So when you put T4s in this ability, it gets really, really awesome, particularly on this team. So it already revived a dead ally with 40% health and it healed everyone for 5,000 health. Now it's gonna revive a dead ally with 50% health instead and 10% of someone's health can be very significant. You can think of it as three red stars worth of health on someone, you know, on a tank that has 300,000 health, uh, that's quite a bit, you can do the math. And then, the flat healing for 3,000 extra health is not important, but the really big part is the added line, revive a dead supernatural ally with 65% health. So some people have been confused by this ability, I'm not really sure why, it seems pretty straightforward to me, but some people have been asking, does this mean that a supernatural ally instead gets revived with 65% health instead of 50% health? What it actually means is he will revive a dead supernatural ally with 65% health and then revive another dead ally with 50% health. So if two people are dead on the supernatural team, he will revive two people. He's one of only two characters in the game that can do a double revive. I guess technically three if you count Nobu. But so 
Yeah, he can bring back two people and the Supernatural one is coming back with 65% health. This is absolutely huge because this team is fairly squishy. However, they get really good benefit out of having their teammates killed. Ghost Rider, if he's the one who dies, gives out lots of ability energy. If it's someone else that dies, Ghost Rider retaliates and does a bunch of energy. Mordo's giving out ability energy if it's a mystic that dies. So we'll talk about Strange's passive in a second, but you can usually keep Strange on the field and it's okay if other people die because it's very likely that Strange will get energy and then bring them back. And being able to revive two people, one with 50% health and one with 65% health is absolutely massive. So for me, this is just an, a total no brainer. 100% this is a four star. All right, now let's take a look at Strange's passive. So this changes a couple of things. Firstly, on turn, instead of 20% chance to change the lowest ally's speed bar by 30%, it goes up to a 30% chance, and that's good. Speed is definitely good. An extra 30% speed bar can absolutely make a huge difference, especially on a team with a lot of debuffs. If someone can go early and apply an offense down or a defense down, right before a big turn, whether they're reducing the damage of a big incoming attack or defense downing right before someone's about to do a big damage ability can be totally huge, but that is not that common. Why this is so important is the other line that changes, which is when a positive effect is applied to an enemy, in addition to healing for 5% of his character's max health, he'll now also gain one deflect up to five. So one of the main vulnerabilities that this team has is Doctor Strange. If Doctor Strange dies, then you've lost your ability to revive not one, but two dead allies. It's really, really important to keep Doctor Strange alive. And him gaining a deflect stack up to five, anytime an enemy gains a positive effect, is absolutely huge, especially with the current scope of the game, tons of characters gain positive effects. So he's pretty much always gonna have multiple stacks of deflect, and that is gonna give him so much survivability because that's a guaranteed block. So any incoming damage attack, as long as it's blockable, which there are very, very few abilities that aren't blockable, as long as it's blockable, he's gonna reduce the damage that it does by 25% because that's his block amount. So that is really, really good for keeping Strange on the field. And killing Strange is one of the only ways to really cripple this team. So this just shores up one of their only weaknesses. It's really, really, really good. It should definitely be one of your first upgrades. For me, no question, this is a four star. All right, now let's take a look at Scarlet Witch. We'll start with Scarlet Witch's basic. When you put T4s in that, it improves the damage on the basic attack by 20%. And that's it. Not only is that a below average amount of damage to gain, but then her damage number is not that impressive. She's not known for her damage. She's usually not even gonna use that basic until turn three. Uh, this is just awful. This is a one star for me. Now let's take a look at Scarlet Witch's special. So when you put T4s in this ability, it goes from a 50% chance to apply defense up to an ally when you use this ability to a 100% chance to apply defense up. And that sounds pretty good, and sometimes it certainly is. I mean, don't get me wrong, defense up is really good, and it's definitely better than someone not getting defense up. However, the way it works out, it's only a one-turn defense up, so the way the speeds tend to work out on this team, a lot of times it's not up for really good windows of time. It doesn't offer that much protection. And then because it's RNG based, it's not that uncommon for most of the characters to get the defense up anyway, and they're already gonna get deflect. So it's definitely good. Uh, this ability is on you know, a five energy cooldown. And again, she can get a lot of ability energy, but uh, yeah, for me, it's good. I don't, I don't think it's quite essential. Uh, but it's definitely very strong, so for me this is a 3 star. Alright, now let's take a look at Scarlet Witch's ultimate. So this changes a couple of things. Firstly, it improves the damage of the attack by 15%, and that is piercing damage, but again, she doesn't really have impressive damage. Even with the extra damage, it's only doing 100%. It's, this ability is on a really, really long cooldown, so the damage is, is barely a factor here at all. What's more important is she will always apply defense down to all enemies with four or more supernatural allies, as opposed to doing it about 50% of the time. She had a 50% chance to apply the defense down. Now, several people have asked, does this mean she'll defense down and then extend it? No, she extends other debuffs first and then applies defense down. So this is not as good as it sounds. It's certainly not bad to make sure you're defense downing your opponents, but she tends to go last on the Supernatural team, and then any enemies that go before other people on her team can actually capitalize on that. 
are just going to remove that defense down anyway, so you don't always get the value out of it. And then, depending on what abilities have already happened, for example, Doctor Strange will go before her. If he gets a Winds of Watum on a team that had defense ups already, he's just going to make sure everyone already has defense down, so that's not even going to come into play, and then she's going to extend the defense down that Strange had already applied, so there are a lot of instances where this doesn't quite matter, or you're not quite able to uh, fully take advantage of it. So I do like it, and it's definitely an above average upgrade, and it can make a difference in a fight, but I don't know that it'll happen often enough, and there's enough other ways for this team to apply defense down that for me, this is just a three star. All right, and finally, let's take a look at Scarlet Witch's passive. So when you put T4s in this ability, it goes from a 40% chance to spread a negative effect to a 50% chance to spread a negative effect. So we had a lot of trouble figuring out how to quantify how good this is, um, I I like it, it can be very impactful, but the more debuffs that are already going around, the less impactful it is. Firstly, because it's still RNG, so it can still not happen three times in a row, or it can still happen three times in a row, even if you don't upgrade it. And uh, it doesn't let you choose, of course, which debuff gets carried over, so you might be uh, spreading a negative effect from someone that has offense down, defense down, and slow, and the person next to them might only have slow, but she might try to spread the slow, and if the target already has slow, then it was kind of a waste anyway. So there are plenty of instances when this makes a world of difference. She'll spread an offense down right before an enemy's about to go, and you just get that free offense down and you cut someone's damage in half, or she'll spread a defense down. Um, the bigger, more important ones, she can spread blind, which is amazing. She can spread ability block, disrupt. I've seen this ability be very impactful, but again, it doesn't happen that often. So that was kind of the, the difficulty in grading this is it's not that often going to make a difference, but when it does, it can make a very big difference. So ultimately, we settled on calling this a three star. All right, now let's take a look at Mordo. So looking at Mordo's basic, when you apply T4 to this ability, he goes from applying one to two random negative effects to always applying two random negative effects. So this one is, again, it's kind of difficult to gauge. It doesn't gain any damage whatsoever, and the negative effects that it chooses from are always gonna be offense down, defense down, and slow. And so on the one hand, always getting two out of three of those is nice. However, half the time this upgrade's gonna do nothing, because half the time, you were going to get two random negative effects anyway. Always getting that second random negative effect means it's more likely to get the one you need. If there's one in particular, if you're really trying to get a defense down, you're really trying to get an offense down, whatever it is, it is more likely. However, especially on the Supernatural team, they have a lot of ways to apply these debuffs already. So because it's not that often going to be that impactful and half the time it's going to be no different than it would have been anyway, for me, this is just a two star. All right. Now let's take a look at Mordo's special. So Mordo's special goes from a 50% chance to stun otherwise gonna blind to always stun the primary target. And so again, some of these upgrades are kind of tough to quantify because you really have to have a good sense of how often this comes into play. So there are actually a lot of instances where I prefer a blind to a stun. And the reason I say that is, uh, for example, I'm just gonna pick a random ability here. Let's say, uh, Korath's got his ultimate up. If you stun Korath, he's not going to use his ult, but the very next turn, he is going to use his ult and someone's going to get hit really hard. If you hit him with a blind, he's still going to waste his turn, but now also his ultimate is on cooldown and you don't have to worry about it for a while. So there are instances where I actually prefer the blind to the stun. However, in particular with the uh, types of teams that Supernatural tends to face, I've found that I'm starting to appreciate the stun more in particular because what is really damaging to this team are cleanses. And so in particular, I'm trying to stun characters like Groot before they remove negative effects. And so for that reason, because when you need this ability to make a difference, you need it to be the stun, getting that guaranteed stun does make it more reliable and just knowing what you're gonna get is useful. So. For me, this is a three star. All right, now let's take a look at Mordo's ultimate. So when you put T4s in this ability, it just increases the damage by 30%. That's it, and I mean, again, that is just the definition of a standard AOE upgrade. It's just 30% damage, which is pretty generic. So for me, this is just a two star. All right, now let's take a look at Mordo's passive. 
So this one's really good. It changes a couple things. Firstly, on death of any character, instead of just healing himself for 10% of his max health, he's now also going to heal the most injured supernatural ally for 10% of his max health as well. And that is a ton of sustain, especially against any team with any summons, especially in modes like Raid where you might be facing some weaker enemies because there's more of them. This ends up being a lot more healing. It's very, very useful. And then in addition, it also changes on death of a mystic instead of always granting one ability energy to himself and an ally, uh, specifically the most injured supernatural ally, he now has a 50% chance to grant two ability energy to himself and the most injured supernatural ally. And this is also really, really big because, of course, their entire team is mystics. So when someone dies, especially on the mystic team, you want to be able to save whoever's left you want to get energy to Doctor Strange to revive right away or get energy to Scarlet Witch right away if she's still alive so that she can rebalance or you want to get energy of course to uh, Mordo so he can blind and stall to let cooldowns come back up. There's so many reasons why this team absolutely loves ability energy and giving out extra ability energy especially to the most injured supernatural ally can absolutely allow you to turn a match around especially when you can have really big swings like a two character revive from Doctor Strange. So that alone is probably worth being a four star, but no question the healing on the death of any character is so much healing whether you're doing a bunch of the killing or whether you're uh, unfortunately on the receiving end of some of the killing, uh, it still amounts to a ton of healing. And then obviously it'll make Ghost Rider retaliate and with all the damage he'll do in retaliation, you might get another kill and more healing. I mean, it can it can amount to a lot of healing in a very short window of time. It's just so good. No question for me, this is a four star. All right, and finally, we're gonna take a look at Loki. And so if you're wondering why Loki, there are a lot of reasons why Loki is really good with this team, but uh, I did just want to address this. I have been asked by quite a few people, you know, wouldn't Venom be great on this team? Wouldn't Hela be great on this team? Wouldn't Graviton be great on this team? And there are a ton of characters that will fit really well as a fifth character substitute on this team. The reason I went with Loki is because, especially for where we are right now in the meta, Loki is the strongest character that doesn't really have a home and he synergizes with this team really well. So that's why I picked Loki to be the sub on this team. But yes, you can use characters like Venom or Graviton if you aren't already using them on teams that they're more designed for. So let's take a look at Loki's basic attack. So when you put T4s in this ability, it's going to add 30% more piercing damage and an extra 10% chance to get evade. So yes, that extra chance to get evade is nice, but it's only 10%, so it's only going to make a difference 1 in 10 times, and you're probably not going to use anywhere near that many basic attacks. And the extra 30% damage is not that much, Loki's not really a high damage character. All in all, this is a pretty standard upgrade, so for me, this is a 2 star. Alright. Now let's take a look at Loki's special. So this one was kind of hard to quantify because what it does is it guarantees that you always get a second mind controlled enemy to attack the primary target. Whereas without the T4s, you always get one mind controlled enemy and you have a 75% chance to get the second mind controlled enemy. So the reason this one was tough to gauge is because three out of four times, this upgrade is gonna make no difference whatsoever. A, you know, he already has a 75% chance to mind control two enemies, so it's not absolutely critical. However, at the end of the day, you really very often need both mind controlled enemies. That ends up making a world of difference, so it's less that uh, you're going to get a lot of damage out of this, and it's more that you're going to eliminate the instances where you weren't getting that second mind control and you were getting screwed out of a lot of damage. So. It's definitely a good upgrade and making sure that you always get the proper amount of mind controlled enemies is very, very important. So for me, this is a three star. Now let's take a look at Loki's ultimate. So this one's kind of hard to quantify as well because what it does is when you put T4s in it, it extends the duration of the stealth to Loki and all his allies, except for the mirror images he creates for two turns instead of one. And uh, it also improves the damage of the minions that he summons a little bit. So the extra minion damage is nice, but it's uh, not particularly important. And as a general rule, his minions aren't really there for the damage that they do. However, the extended stealth has its pros and cons. On the one hand, 
you're more likely to keep the summons on the field longer if you only have the one turn of stealth. Your characters will pop out of stealth right away and then the enemies can attack wherever they want. If they do go after a mirror image, there's a good chance that the mirror image still has their evade and evades it. So you end up keeping the summons on the field and it is a good bit more damage, especially if they survive for several turns. However, on the flip side, if you keep all of your allies stealth, it forces the enemies to waste multiple attacks on the mirror images firstly to blow their evade and then to kill them and it ends up keeping your allies stealth for longer and it gives you more of an opportunity to heal them. So there are instances when you actually don't want the stealth to last for two turns but you don't get a choice and ultimately protecting the important characters on your team tends to outweigh protecting the summons even though there are instances where again you weren't going to take that much damage and you'd rather have the summons stay on the field a bit longer but Again, most of the time this is what you're gonna want, and so for that reason, for me, this is a three star. All right, and finally, let's take a look at Loki's passive. So when you put T4s in Loki's passive, instead of reducing enemy resistance by 20%, he's gonna reduce enemy resistance by 30%. And that's really, really good, especially for a team of mystics who are all about applying their debuffs. I mean, at the end of the day, Getting their debuffs to apply is the most important thing that this team needs to do to make sure that they're able to win a match. And so reducing enemy resistance by an extra 10% is really, really good. Um, their focus tends to be pretty good. So this is gonna be more noticeable in particular when you're trying to punch up really high. But yeah, again, it's just very, very strong. So it's not absolutely necessary because they have pretty good focus. Uh, just ensuring that they are able to do what they want to do is very good. So for me, this is a three star. All right, so that wraps up the Orange Essentials for the Supernaturals. Thank you guys very much for checking it out. Shout out to Vet for doing a terrific job editing as always. Shout out to Clan HQ for sponsoring this video. There will be a link in the video description below to download Clan HQ. Definitely check it out. I'm on there. If you have any questions, you can catch me. Otherwise, I stream Marvel Strike Force every single day on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash casino every single day at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Also, anyone is welcome to join my Discord server. We have blitz predictions, infographics, videos, content creator Q&A, and more. It's discord.gg slash casino. The link to that is in the video description below as well. But uh, yeah, I've gone on long enough, so thank you guys very much for checking this out. I hope it helps. And uh, I've got a couple more videos on the way for you guys, so I'm going to get to work on those, and I will see you guys real soon. Until then, peace!